design future. So I have here uh, Rebecca San that is going to help us on this video actually because I was uh, indeed explaining some techniques that they, the Shizen women used to apply to survive. So we have to consider a very specific moment in Japan on, on the historical uh, moment where you know well the Japanese uh, traditional cloth is uh, very specific so we have layers of, of uh, kimono we have also for, uh, to the female cloth a, an obi that could be depending on the moment a, a hanhaba obi that is more common with the common kimono the daily life uh, kimono also depending on the, on the weather will be yukata or something like that will be last layers of kimono and the way that they used to walk and actually to move due to this specific uh, kimono and how not to be a uh, victim on those uh, periods of history because you know well depending on we can see it on many movies uh, they are very small actually the Japanese woman is, is uh, just like me or shorter so they are small and they are very uh, Fragile. So that's actually the characteristic of the Japanese woman. Yes, they are like um, they are very skilled on their tasks, the daily tasks. But they normally didn't get uh, involved with a war or some uh, combat or fight situation. So that's the, what characteristic is the most that we see. Is normally only men manipulate uh, weapons or knives. Although you may also understand that on um, war uh, periods, all the warriors, all the, uh, now you're dealing with the samurai class, they go to the battlefield and sometimes women were responsible for protecting the castle so that, or the, the interior village because all the men were, were actually out. So we have a situation where we have elders and children and so therefore the woman was also responsible for protecting them but be aware that normally they need larger weapons in case of having any weapons because fighting so close was very very complicated for them actually you may see that even for war, walk or speak they are very delicate that's the cultural aspects of, of the country so let's just see how Shizen used to see this and actually how the female, the Shizen woman, used to deal with this because now we are going to some cultural aspects that is not so similar as the Japanese culture itself so uh, I have here some things that you see that are daily common objects that they could carry one of them you see I have here uh, this object on my hair that is called Kanzashi in Japanese, this is very common and normally all women will use it. And also, I have a special Shizen weapon here that actually is a common, probably, object that you may find in some other culture that is made of horn. And this is actually a knife. So, on the Shizen tradition, that is called Zetsu Ma. Zetsu is tongue, Ma is like demon. So, it's like the tongue. Of a demon. So actually, if we see it, it maybe remind us on the drawers that the tongue design. And on that weapon, you see here we have a curve that this is the sharp edge. Okay. So normally the size of it is perfect because for them they could carry inside the obi. Now please be aware that I'm wearing here the male kimono, but. Imagine that I am here using the normal female kimono. You see that they carry a very large obi here. So this is perfect to put inside the obi. So even transversal, you wouldn't be able to see it. Okay? And therefore also, especially because women to dress that obi, they used to uh, wear a, an object to keep it really um, well uh, on the body, well fit on the body, so the outfit will be perfect. Okay, so this is the, the obita, and that it's to keep it completely perfect. So if you put it inside or even uh, inside the, the near close to the body, neither the form of the knife will be seen. Okay, so also consider that sometimes they used to travel from one city to another, walking through those roads. That, 
and some very uh, dangerous situations can come from there, not only on the village itself, but especially when you're outside. Mm -hmm. So considering this, let's just imagine that I have here my female kimono and we will study a series of situations where we can deal with them. Then it would be interesting to see some cases uh, how she's a female defended uh, themselves. Here in the next uh, scenes you will see uh, some interpretations of how she's and women defend themselves. Okay, so for our first uh, simulation here we have the presence of Shilushi Luz Nogida-san that actually will be our aggressive aggressor on this video. And let us analyze Rega-san those cases. Okay, normally uh, as they are very, very um, delicate and they are sometimes very innocent actually, uh, just the presence of our aggressor may cause panic. And now dealing with panic, you need to know that it changes your breathing, it changes your capability of thinking, uh, of reasoning things, and especially it avoids you to see the opportunities for you to react. That everything that causes panic, that, so therefore, normally is the first thing that the aggressor will do. Because when it provokes panic in someone, and even enjoy by provoking that panic, the victim collapses. So that's what we are going to try to avoid on, the, on our analysis here. So just by, for instance, the aggressor comes and take uh, the kimono, okay, normally. And therefore, it comes for a second attack. Or it just to cause panic and talk or something, because sometimes they enjoy like causing fear. Okay, so the first thing is that I need to analyze what, what is happening. Like, just don't get out of the camera, but um, I need to uh, segregate. I mean, I need to be sure what is happening, which persons are there, if I can do something. So, when he gets within two meters of distance, that gets a lot more complicated. So, it changes considerably all the analysis. and. Therefore, that's the complicated situation that we're going to talk here. So, by the Zetsuma here, just by, for instance, Rarega-san, here, sometimes he's going to um, use to fret. Use mm -hmm. the, the fist. And yes, and fret, the because normally the an aggressor enjoys the fear that he caused on the victim. Mm -hmm. So, the Zetsuma here, after seeing wherever you can, okay, now the, for you to survive and not to get on this, but just considering uh, what he is doing and analyzing that he is already on that distance, the Zetsuma, while I distract him wherever I can for him not to look to my arm, it's characterized by using the same hand. So from here, you see that will be the sharp edge, it's just to grab and to cut off, to cripple. Mm -hmm. So oh, by man, doing this, because it's fingers. so sharp, Okay, depending on the pressure, you actually cut off fingers. Okay, mm -hmm. so by doing this, imagine that I did this. The second thing is to go through an area that he cannot control. Because if I do here, he could he'll use see his fist and strike you. Yes, and he he'll see everything that I can do mm -hmm. here now because he can, he's focused that I I have a weapon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so important thing here is to go from an area that he cannot control. So here we can start, we have several areas, and also, as it's circular, it's really good to cut in the mm -hmm. circular moves mm -hmm. and go really deep, you need to bump mm -hmm. and cut it. So we have here, and after it, it doesn't matter where you go, because then you have strike three areas. Mm -hmm. You go to several areas, it doesn't matter if it's a mandibular area or eyes. Inside the ear is actually also very, very effective. Mm -hmm. And a special curiosity of the Zetsuma is that normally, a normal weapon, people will cut like this. Nobody will uh, get the idea of this hidden weapon. When yes, but especially the, on the, the, those historical moments, as normally people use the knife like this. This mm -hmm. is what probably a person will expect. But with this weapon, they used to do the opposite way because first they're going to stab. So normally, by doing this, what they do is they, 
they stab and then mm -hmm. they change and cut or they step like this mm -hmm. and then they go to the edge area and mm -hmm. finish cutting so they go deeper and deeper by doing this anatomically speaking uh, it's easier to stab and go forward uh, to the enemy to perform the movement yes because uh, if you do that if I, I use my right hand yes so I have a strength here and this, if he goes backward, he goes okay. superficial. He will be escaping. Yes, he goes superficial. But then, if I step first, and then I continue, continue this movement, and go further, mm. it's going to penetrate more that area, and actually is going to make the injuries or the damage of course. a lot worse. We're in Japan in the Middle Ages, and we are surviving from a threat. And that would be uh, an idea to overcome the threat that's coming to us. Yes, and not the big thing, but. Uh, and the, th the thing is that you need to use your intelligence, intelligence <laughs> to understand the moment that, that he will be vulnerable. Because we're, if we are here, just me and you, and we are more or less the same weight and everything, sure. that's one thing. Imagine that they are very. Mm -hmm. Delegate and Luis and for instance is bigger is bigger than me and is stronger than me. Mm -hmm. So the thing is also to find that moment where you can react. Mm -hmm. So depending on this, you see the female kimono or the kimono is just layers of, of uh, mm -hmm. cloth that you go left over right and you have nothing. And so it, it's mm -hmm. really easy target for rapes. And he wouldn't spec a hidden weapon like a sukima. That's why for traveling or for they mm -hmm. used to carry this. Also the Kanzashi that mm -hmm. could be a really good weapon. That's very interesting. Yeah. Depending on the target that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the point here because I need to to like uh, neutralize his strength mm -hmm. and the, the aggressive mm -hmm. that he's he's mm -hmm. in case using. that uh, we have a, a more distance uh, to see we should expect to see the head and the feet in case we of course. can't escape and run. That's, that's my the, 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 the If I can maintain him at least outside my two meters of area, yeah. that's one thing because I see everything that he was going to do. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that normally they go talking or something, they are distracted and he suddenly closer, he could surprise them. For instance, it's very normal if I am here, okay, and a person is coming from behind, although I can see him. Okay, mm -hmm. just a moment please, please son. If he's coming, so it's that, okay, now come. And I notice that he's coming, he's going to press through me. The first thing is also to catch the weapon. Mm -hmm. Okay, although I can keep it close to the body for him not to see that I notice him. Mm -hmm. So normally they normally push the person down and go completely over it. For, mm -hmm. okay. Please do it, Louis son, for instance. He will push it down. 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 I'm going to fall and he's going to cut over. Yes. So here you see is a situation where he controls. Mm -hmm. Yes? And so normally they uh, talk or they are uh, threatening. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that by doing this to the kimono, I have here the circular area and I have to go exactly for a target that will really be effective. So, so I have here the ear. Mm -hmm. When I do that, I have to push him away. So you are pushing him to get space to... Yes, I did already a cut that is not lethal, mm -hmm. although it's going to bleed and eventually he's going to be weaker because of the bleeding. But I also step on the ear. That's, that's really important because it goes to the base of the brain. So in the okay? moment you're feeling that he is uh, having the control of you and then he gets I have to yes, get an opportunity to go and... And that's a really important uh, situation because normally women will get run away immediately because of the panic. But as she's a woman, normally they go for the person and they used to stab mm -hmm. how many ways she could before she stands up and run away. Even till because even otherwise he's going to stand up again yeah. and they're going to run away for her and probably will be more aggressive and more violent. Mm -hmm. So that is the one situation. Another situation could be normally because of they normally get in panic is the frontal situation. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, will be more or less the same consideration. Although I will need to see a moment where I have 
a better opportunity to do that. So that was they used to analyze. So uh, imagine that he pushed me or something and I fell down and I'm here and he controls both arms. Yes? So this for me, he's strong, the pressure for me will be hard and difficult to do that. But you see my legs. So the thing is that I need to pass my knees inside. So I have ribs here. And here you see my foot is already on his legs. Okay? I see. So once I do that, I have to go for the weapon. If I, I can treat this with the same weapon that we were using, or for instance, let's check here an easier weapon that I have on my head. So he's here, I push it, you see, I'm already have here. And you get the first the started to the eyes. eyes. And here, here. mandibular. And mandibular or throat. Okay, so here, from those three targets, I push him and I have to come and continue the, uh, the, the attack mm -hmm. until I get condition always in front, by seeing him mm -hmm. to get away from it. As I understand, if, as you have explained, if, if you push too much, it will react even harder to uh, or He you. could punch me, for instance, mm -hmm. yeah? Because if I'm here and I decide to push him away, just his holding here, I put it and I do that, he will and react. if I do nothing, of course, and he'll he won't have enough time. And then probably I'll and be mess up. Be and then, then it's, it's over for me. So that's why I have to distract us to go for one hand. Normally also, depending on the situation, if you really think clear, normally man, in some point, is going to keep only one hand. Because he will need the other hand to open the kimono or to manipulate his own cloak. So when he has just one hand, that is even better for, for them to react. Because Normally, on that moment, he will be more distracted. So you should, in in cases that like that, try to or cry or not to do anything, any reaction, and uh, wait for a possibility to you have need a to, chance to speak. Yes, you need to keep react. You need actually to keep your thoughts clear mm -hmm. to with the some kind of coldness that is possible. Identify where is the moment that you can use better, okay? Because if I, he's, he's actually pressing and he's aggressive, and I can, like an actress, yes, use this to say that I'm panicking for him to feel confident that he controls the situation, it will be easier for me to react. Mm -hmm. So it, it will depend, okay? I need to always see the possibility of a reaction. And because of his size, and normally he's stronger and, and, and he's taller, then, then the victim, if the punch comes or if he really uses this violence, it will be difficult because it's inevitable. Once you got this, you, you lose your sense of, of time and space and then it gets more difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, the first, it doesn't matter if you have to, you have to do a role mm -hmm. of the panic victim, but then it's, 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 if this is going to actually like a strategy, be effective for you, then this will be the better way. So the thing is that they use common things, normally even the geta. Uh -huh. Because you know, you understand that, I don't have it here now, but um, you understand that the, the wooden geta shoes that they used to use, uh -huh. if he normally is carrying a weapon, a knife or a sword, they use the geta to defend from of the course. carving weapon. It's like a shield, because they used to get the geta and put it on the hands, so it will be so easier for me protective. to try to impact or to use the geta mm -hmm. to avoid the cuts. And it's very hard you could uh, damage uh, the opponent with that. It, if you we use the geta and you impact this wooden on the jaw, it will fracture. So depending on if you can use well those moments, it will be effective. The point here is to use well. <laughs> has to not panic and use well. So those are survival. Uh, characteristic that they used to consider mm -hmm. as normally not that becoming the victim. Not is if you are put in a victim situation, how to put yourself or on the, the aggressor, aggressor. Become, become the aggressor. Yes, mm -hmm. that's 
that's the, the main point here for you not to panic because once the aggressor reacts mm -hmm. and if he punches it's hard it's really hard normally they used to also for instance imagine that we are just standing up but if he has here my neck mm -hmm. yes that they normally men do that because they are so small yeah. yes the thing is that those hands will be difficult if he put a lot of strength and if he just bend a bit your, his arms will be hard for me I do that and I have no power. No effect. And when I try it, once I try it, it doesn't work, he's going to attack. Mm -hmm. So we have one chance, for instance, to get out. So this one chance will be on the areas that he probably won't expect. That it will be fingers, the eyes. eyes, okay, areas that is really going to hurt. Elbow. And the second yeah. thing is they used to go oh, exactly as yes. To nowadays, you go for the genital areas because it doesn't matter, he can resist for two seconds, but in the third second, so he'll feel and he go down. And that's when you have to act. And because he came down, you don't run away. They used to go there and break the arm, mm -hmm. eyes, cut, anything that will help them to avoid the rest of you go running for her. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Normally, people do that, and then they get this effect, take it away. Later, four seconds later, you stand up, mm -hmm. and I lo I lost it. Mm -hmm. I lost the control of the situation. Once he goes down, I have to injury more, and I mean you know, on the historical mm -hmm. situation. For me, you can get time to go somewhere because imagine that you're in the middle of nowhere. You're traveling, and you have no no town, no neighbors, no nothing around. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. And. Uh, next video, we are going to bring more curiosities.